You're now rocking with the bad boys of the dynasty. Nasty Noop and Terra Dome on Move the Sticks 365. Welcome up to another episode of Move the Sticks. I'm your host, Nasty Noop. And like always, I have my co-host, the OG Chris Murray with me. What's going on, OG? You know, man, Move the Sticks is back, man. We're ready to bring this heat to him. No doubt, man. So how's your season been going so far? It's, 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 it's honestly, man, it's been going great. Uh, you know, we, we added um, Khalil Mack this all season. We gave up a, a couple solid pieces, but, man, the way he has sparked our defense, I'm telling everybody, you know, man, I'm telling everybody now, I never knew how important it was to have a superstar X Factor on the defensive line, and it helps out tremendously on the defensive side of the ball. So it's been going good. We're sitting at 7 and 1. We got a tough matchup scheduled tonight against our division meet, Bruce and those Browns. So, you know, we just looking, just having fun, man. Just having fun. Yeah, no doubt, man. My season is pretty much over at this point. Sitting at 1 and 6. We got a uh, Sweet 99 next. You know, I just haven't been focused this season, man. I started like a new. Uh, uh, a new uh, getting healthy regiment and I've been putting all my time and focus into that you know watching every mm-hmm. video I can watch on YouTube you know I'm doing the whole intimate fasting type stuff and mm-hmm. trying to find out new supplements so like only time I jump on the game is pretty much to play but hopefully that'll change you know after I, I get used to this new uh, you know this new regiment I'm trying to add to my lifestyle or whatever so I can mm-hmm. get back to focusing on the game or whatever but don't, don't get it twisted now we see them Atlanta Falcons over there building that building that roster up man, <laughs> we watching we watching man we watching I'm, I'm trying man uh, I thought Jim uh, Jim uh, damn Jimmy G was gonna come in and perform a little bit better man but he seems to like to underthrow a couple passes man even when the, re- the receiver is past the defender it's like the ball gets sucked down to the defender, man. I'm even on lob passes. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I think I might be leading the league in interceptions at this point because I know I'm averaging like six or seven a game. So I'm going to have to check the stats on that. But uh, hopefully, you know, going into next season, man, we'll make a couple changes, get the running game going again, which has been non-existent this season. So hopefully uh, we can do some of that. But uh, without further ado, man, let's go ahead and get into some Dynasty news. All right, man. So first up, what do we, what do we have here? Man, we're going, I want to talk about you know because uh, what some people don't I don't think give a lot of credit to is the commissioners out here, man. So this you know your commissioner of the dynasty been running for now for five seasons. Uh, so I just want the input on or want your input on uh, as far as how you've been keeping this lead. First off, keeping guys, you know, interested in being part of the dynasty and just keeping the train moving forward with so many, you know, obstacles to get over, so many bumps in the road. Like, what, like, what, what can you provide? If type of information you can provide, you know, fellow commissioners out there that's probably struggling with keeping their league going. Like, what type of advice can you give those guys? Man, just with this type of league, man, especially like a content league, mm-hmm. constantly trying to, you know, keep the content updated putting out new graphics uh you know and as far as like you know keeping things fresh throughout the league like changing up the rules making things a little bit more uh strategic minded as opposed to just jumping on the game playing playing the game you got to actually think through processes in the Mm -hmm. dynasty which you know adds that little extra layer to it man you know like i said man we've been doing this what since madden 16 Mm and we continue to do the same thing over and over and over every cycle without adding any new wrinkles to it it would get boring man i did to be honest with you so that would be like one of my major uh suggestions to another commissioner man just you know just keep it fresh try to keep reinventing yourself and, and don't get stale in the whole process um and you know try to try to be you know even with this type of league man i have people sending in money making donations I always have to be above board to be honest with you if i was winning here i don't even think people could handle it man because they would say i'm cheating they would probably say i'm doing a whole bunch of other things so it's kind of good that i suck right now man because it, it it takes that burden off my table of all oh, the commissioner is cheating he's doing mm-hmm. this well, i'm really not because i suck at this point so you know you don't have to worry about that that leads up to my next question. You know, when they when when things are being, you know, installed into the league, such as rule changes, um, because we got a new rule that we uh, are about to introduce, I believe, when Hostings gets here, where guys have to come out and match the formation. Now, I was a little, I was a little lost with when this rule came out because I didn't have, you know, too much information um, on what the rule, what the rule actually meant until somebody explained it to me. Um, so what? 
are your thought like what is what is your thought process when you're bringing a rule to the league right because I'm, I'm a part of uh you know the, the team that you sit there you know we we basically hash things out on what we're going to install into the league you know so what is your thought process when you're sitting there right and you're watching the game and you know all right i'm about to, put, uh, about to probably put this rule into play and i know guys are going to be bitching and complaining you know but i gotta make sure that when you're planning playing in your league that it's a e you try to make the playing field as even as possible for both sides of the both sides you know both users like are, are, are do you gotta be a hundred percent mentally strong for that because you know guys are ready to hash at you flood your deals with the bitching and complaining on why this rule was put into place oh most definitely and, and a lot of these rules that get in place are not even my idea this is stuff mm -hmm. even this rule that's coming up where you have to match the defense this was sent to me you know i spent um maybe 30 45 minutes on the phone with the person that suggested it why i was at work uh going over it and then once he gave it to me i gotta go back and spend like another week or two weeks you know, watching games to see how people are, are are actually calling defenses before I be like, okay, I'm gonna give the green light to this one because mm -hmm. you look at it like I'm coming out five wide, okay, and you can come out in a base three four defense and pretty much just shut everything down. Now we all know that's some video game type stuff, mm -hmm. so you know there's no linebacker that's gonna be able to keep up with. You're uh, the, the lowest slot sleep receiver on your team. It's just mm -hmm. not going to happen. But mm -hmm. in this game, the way it's programmed and everything, you got, you know, slow-ass linebackers keeping up with slot receivers that run north of 90, uh, 90 plus speed. It's just not realistic. So let's, let's make it to where now, going into high stakes, you actually have to start building your team at positions that you really didn't think of in the in the past like uh the slot cornerback now now you're gonna have to make sure that you're solid at that position maybe when you go to uh, a, a a nickel defense now you got to have some cover linebackers uh in there instead of the run stoppers at that point so it's a lot more that goes in gets involved into it at that point once we move to high stakes mm -hmm. once, once again like i said wasn't my idea you know, I sit there and I listen to people and, I, and then I have to go in and just think about it. How, how is this going to work out for us? You know, is it going to be a headache for everybody else? Is it going to cause me a headache? Because then I have to, you know, be the asshole and try to enforce all this stuff, you know, when, when, it, when it gets time for it. And, you know, I felt like, yeah, this is a good one. This is a good one because you really shouldn't be able to stop everybody in the 3-4 defense. All right, yeah, so that's, I, 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 to be honest, what's, I got you know the clarity on what the rule meant. I actually liked it because it it makes you, it makes guys have to get out of their comfort zone. Like you know, I have you know one of if not the fastest lineup linebacker in the DML right now, and I'm gonna be honest with you. Sometimes when he's out there making some plays, I know for a fact like oh this dude just ran neck and neck to neck with uh, our last game. He was locking up Julio Jones. You know when he was coming across the middle like it was nothing. So I know you know. That's just man bullshit. You know, I'm going to call it. I'm not going to say, oh, man, you know, it's because the way he's built up. No, I know that that's just flat out man and bullshit, you know. But I, I actually like it because I think that it makes guys have to think. It forces those guys that, you know, want to come out. Like, I, I was like, I'm a guy, you know, sometimes I know what formations get constant pressure. And I know what formations can lock down certain uh, passing formations, you know. So it makes guys just dig a little bit deeper. And I like it, man, because... Since we put in that new playbook rule, man, you have been seeing everybody play somewhat of a different type of game style. You know, and I'm one of them guys right now. I'm running the rock more than I'm actually passing it. So I think, you know, um, sometimes things have to be put into place to just freshen, freshen the lead up, man. Just freshen it up. So I definitely appreciate your input on that, man. For any commissioners, you know, that's listening, you know. I advise y'all to take heed to what he just was uh, saying, man, because the DML has been running five years, man. Five years, and we've been going strong, and, and I'm just glad to be a part of it, man. Right? No doubt, man. But before we move on, man, I want to give an exclusive. Uh, there's probably only one other person that's no, that knows this at the point. At this point, uh, a new rule coming from high stakes. Motion. Woo. Motion will no longer be allowed on the offensive side of the ball. Meaning that only time that you can send wide receivers in motion if it's a predetermined play. This is coming for high stakes. 
some Woo-hoo. some people gonna be asking why, but we all know why because there's certain motion uh, plays in this game right now that if you send a wide receiver in motion, the uh, defensive AI will not adjust to it. So we're gonna take that little glitch glitch out of the out of the uh, out of the out of the game for high stakes to once again make you dig into your playbook, make you dig into your arsenal. To you know that that that's ultimately my always my my goal is to start taking away glitches and all that stuff and actually start making users in the league think how mm-hmm. to beat somebody as opposed to always trying to depend on oh I found this little glitch in the AI so I'm gonna use this whenever whenever I'm in third and twenty I know this play will work because I can send this wide receiver in motion and he'll get open no matter what. No, mm-hmm. you might as well start adjusting because it's coming. Um, just like I said, this is exclusive right now. I'm just dropping it because we don't move the sticks right now. Um, which our our goal is by the end of this season or the beginning of the next season to have all the rules uh, for high stakes out so that people can start adjusting their uh, playing styles for it. Mm, y'all better take heed, take heed, and listen, y'all. Adjust them playing styles. No doubt. So, man, I guess when, while we're still on Dynasty News, man, let's go ahead and move on, man. We had a, a big incident in the Dynasty yesterday uh, involving a Mr. T. Payne. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, I, I don't want people to think that I got mad at T. Payne and I put him out because he, would, he was at the hospital with his kid. Because anybody that's been here long enough that they've had life events, anytime they've hit me up in the DM, the first thing that comes out of my mouth, life comes first. And, hey, man, handle your business. The issue with T-Pain yesterday was if he knew he was going to be at the hospital, you know, take managing his kid all day, tell under two rated, hey, man, I can't play. Go ahead and give you the force win. But when you're, like, leading somebody on for hours and hours and hours, you know, that's a problem, man. You know, you know uh, nobody's time is more important than anybody else's time in this league. And people are now wondering, why do we have this? Uh, you have to report to Dion after the first 24 hours if you haven't played your game. It's because I constantly get complaints about uh, dudes not replying to DMs, trying to schedule their game. So now I got to put more crap on my plate and try to, you know, try to manage that so, so that dudes can get their games played. Some dudes in this league like to play the game and they want to try to get their game played as soon as possible. I can't hate on them for wanting to play the game. All we're asking you to do is communicate. Hey man, I can't play I can't play today, but I can play tomorrow at this time. And, and like I was telling, you know, SJ to tell T Pain yesterday, I was like, tell him he does not work for Comcast. You can't give people these big ass windows and then they gotta sit around their house all day waiting for you just to pop up out like Casper the Ghost or something. No, man. You have to respect people's time and give them a, a hard time. Hey, I can play at 7 o'clock. Even when I hit them up in the DM yesterday, I'm not in the DM, but in the chat, I said, hey, man, just give them a hard time to when you can play. He chose to want to go on a tangent, go on a rant for whatever reason. And somebody, oh, y'all can put me out. I, and once again, I told him, I never threatened to put you out. So you can, you know, go on somewhere with that. But then he came back again with it. Y'all got to do what y'all got to do. So at that point, Hey, man, if you're going to keep bringing it up, I'm going to go ahead and do what you requested me to do. And I'm going to go ahead and put you out and move on. Because since Madden 17, i pretty much been protecting him from guys wanting his head forever because he is hard to schedule with. And we also have to remember back in them days, he was working a crazy schedule to where he wasn't getting off to 11, 12 o'clock at night. And dudes wanted to play their games. I even had the bus one night wake up at 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning to play him. Because he wanted to play his game so bad. So for him to, you know, try to come at me like that, I felt some type of way. But I didn't put him out for his kid. I put I put him out because, hey, here you go, you've been a problem child for so long. And for some reason, now you want to be uppity about the situation. When I, I've been your biggest defender from getting your head chopped off when people wanted to boot you years ago because of your schedule. But I said, no, nah, man, you have to be understanding of people. They work Everybody in here is trying to, you know, enjoy themselves and have fun in the league. So I can't boot this man because he works a jacked up schedule. But he did try to, you know, play play his games the best he could. But at this point, it's just getting it's getting old to where it's the same same couple dudes that seem to be the biggest headaches 
for me as mm-hmm. far as like trying to get their game scheduled or whatever. I can't keep doing that, man. And then you want to be an asshole about it. Just not gonna do that. You just can't be no asshole and then and then expect me to just continue to be be an advocate for you. So yesterday I was like, hey man, this this a wrap. I didn't want to do it. My goal is not to put nobody else out, man, or to, to ever put anybody else because I think we have a good core do a good core of guys here that like to play the game 365 that plays their games. But some guys are just hard to schedule with for whatever goddamn reason. When all you got to do is pick up a damn phone and send a goddamn text message, which takes all of one damn minute to say, hey, man, can't play today, but I can play tomorrow at this time. So, like I said, man, I hated putting T-Pain out, T-Pain out the league, but it was just time to move on at that point, man. Hopefully the new guy that came in won't be that type of headache and I can go on and do what I need to do. Yeah, man, like, you know, me, me just add my input in it. It's just... It's real simple. Like we all, everybody uh, has lives outside of man. We all understand that. But once again, like I stated before, and we all know it, we all are a group of individuals who enjoy playing the game. And even if you got something going on outside with, that's involving family or just life, period, a simple DM won't hurt, man. Like I was toward in life, a three second conversation can take you a very long way. You know, it doesn't take that long to send a DM. Listen, you can have the Force W or whatever, you know, because. It been times when I had something going on outside of the game, whereas though my opponent made his schedule f- schedule flexible for me by just off of the respect of me reaching out to him and letting him know what was going on. Listen, man, I got a family emergency going on. I know we had a game scheduled for 730, but I can't make it. You know, and the dude, dudes respect that. All right, man, no problem. Handle your family stuff, man. I hope whatever it is, it works out. Just let me know when you can ball. That's it. You know, so I think sometimes guys get caught up a little bit in their emotions by... Thinking that dudes are coming at them as, as as on a coming at them on the angle of dog man I'm trying to play my game like like who cares man like I don't care about your family what's going on no it's not that man like if you actually sit down and just sometimes just think about it dudes will find out like damn you right I was in the wrong on that you know then for him to come into the main chat and it just like just blast off it was like you could have came to to the DM or whatever you know. You handled it totally wrong, man. But that's my guy. Like I said, man, I, I, I uh, fucks with T-Pain heavy. You know, I wish all all is well with his uh, son. But, you know, you, you still got to communicate, man. You still got to communicate. So, you know, hopefully, like I said, everything good with his son, man. And, you know, everything good with him, bro. Yeah, most of them, I, I have no hard feelings towards T-Pain, man. He was a good guy while he was here outside of the schedule and stuff, man. So, uh, if he wants to come back, he can work his way up through the blueprint. And uh, uh, I know some people might not like that because then they're going to be scared he might be in their division and they're going to have to deal with that headache. But uh, like I said, I have no issue with him, man, if he wants to come back or whatever. So that was it for Dynasty News. So let's move on to the most controversial segment of any show in the DML. And we call it What the Fuck. What's going on, OG? What you got up first? Man, listen, listen. We're going to talk about these off-season trees, okay? Off-season trees. First up, we got the big homie and the Indianapolis Colts, okay? They made a trade this off-season, trading back to pick 16th, okay? Trading back to pick 16th, putting, I want y'all to listen, turn the volume up, I want y'all to listen to me, putting the Super Bowl champ, Embrono Green Bay Packers, in the top 10. Top 10. Putting them inside of the top 10 to make a draft pick, okay? First off, the big homie. You move back 16 slots. For what reason? I don't know why, okay? Now, the trade was you got a current third and a future second. Now, some guys may think from a different point of view. Oh, I got three picks. Listen, bro. Everybody knows if you want to move up into the top 10, you got some guys who are offering current first and future first. You got a one, a current first, a current third, and a future second. But let's dig a little deeper. You have a team who's aging at all positions, okay, all positions with top-tier talent that went inside of the top 10. We had good starting uh, office alumnus, a solid uh, piece to add to your secondary. We had a superstar X-Factor D-Tackle. I just don't get it, man. But on that note, y'all give him the button. What the fuck? All right, man. So let's go move on to the next 
what the fuck moment. What do you have here? All right, man. Tone, 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 tone. It just seemed like we about to just remix this segment to the tone segment because you just keep finding yourself leaning on what the fuck, man. Okay, now let's let's let's, let's dig into what Tone did this previous offseason. Okay, Tone trades away his six overall first round pick to the Packers. Another another light bulb that I don't know didn't go off in his head. The Super Bowl defender champ who already has a stacked roster. Okay, and I'm talking about if you look at this Green Bay Packers roster, there is no weak link at all, and these guys are young. That's the kicker. They're young. Okay. So you 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 see he has a young talented roster that don't lack a lick of anything on either side of the ball. You equip him with the number six pick. Okay. But let's talk about what Tone got. Tone got Martinez, a linebacker, okay, who flourished in the Green Bay flourished on the Green Bay Packers defense for the three years that he was there. But let's break down why he was talented on that Green Bay Packers team. One, he had a solid pass rush. Two, solid cornerbacks. Three, great user skills slash play calling. So now you're bringing a guy who looked good on a stacked team to an aging down, pretty much beat down vehicle. Okay? That's like getting some new leather seats inside of a beat up hoopty. Okay? This guy is at 81 overall. He's 29. What was the reason of bringing this, of even making this trade when you, like the big homie, could have took your number six overall pick and got a cornerback by the name of Jordan Cohen, who was one of the most talented defensive pieces besides one other player in this draft, who you could have brought on your team to be molded by agent Stephon Gilmore, or you could have got Denard Wheaton, who by far all reports up until the draft said that this guy had Aaron Donald potential talent. Aaron Donald potential talent. So you could have been, you could have used this pick instead of equipping it with <laughs> the Super Bowl champ who has a stack roster. I'm going to put an explanation point behind that. And you could have equipped your team with a better piece. So I don't get what this trade was made for, but Deion, give him the button too. What the fuck? All right, man. So let's move on to the next one. Oh my God, man! This one right here. This, this I, I wanted to actually talk about this twice in Dynasty news and on what the fuck. The schemer. How many goddamn X Factor players that's old as hell are you going to sign and trade for? Okay, he bring in Mike Evans. This the beginning of the preseason. Bring in Mike Evans. You trade away Robbie Anderson, who's your fastest wide receiver on your team. Okay, you do got Julio Jones. You got Michael Thomas. But these guys, you need a deep, a speedy guy to help these slow guys who are Asian, who pretty much are, you're just basically balling out with them because they're just X-Factors. And man, just love to show, you know, the X-Factor players, those special, you know, that just, just show them a little bit of extra love. Let's put it like that. But you trade away Robbie Anderson to bring in Mike Evans, what the f- I don't get it. And then you give up a pick also. I don't get it. This guy is aging. Don't get me wrong. All right, I understand you got to try to put the best football team on the field each season. But, dude, how many X-Factor, old-ass X-Factors, are you going to continue to put on your roster who's going to be sucking up money? Who's going to be sucking up money? Rumors had it that... The, the, the Jets had to go get a goddamn loan for one of the top guys, one of the top high, one of the most richest persons out in New York to pay off they pay their damn quarterback. Y'all here taking taking loans and shit? Come on, man, you got you got schemer. Listen to me, schemer. You are building up a good team. You are taking practice squads bums and you're building them up to dudes that are that are balling out in the dynasty. Dog, you don't. The way that you, the way that you do, I just think that you just be in the crib, you be singing, you start sipping some wine and shit, and and you just be thinking these crazy masterist plans that don't like. I don't get it, man. You like a dangerous, crazy dude in the laboratory or some shit, man. You got got to slow down, man, because I'm telling you, your funds is not gonna make it to high stakes, man. Your fun, your funds is not gonna make it. But on that note, give him the button too, man. What the fuck? 
All right, man. So we got two two what the fuck moments left. So go on to the next one. All right, this one right here, man. It it, it just it's just too obvious. Okay, it's just, it's too obvious, man. It's it's they they knew they they, they knew they knew that they was coming on. They they was gonna get the segment. And I got to give it to Expert in the Cowboys and KP and these Chiefs. Now, I'd have been called Tank Murray, OG Tank Murray. The list goes on how much, how many tanks has pulled up in my driveway or how many tanks have been just been dropped on me. It, 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 the list just goes on and on. So when I'm looking at this Cowboys schedule, for one, okay. And he took two some losses. Let's just say that because he was busy. So let's just scratch through. So if we eliminate the two some losses, the Cowboys will be sitting at two and five. All right. So he had the Packers, played against the Packers, and he had the Texans early on in the first half of the season, I believe. Okay. Expert after taking those two losses. I don't know what it was, but he probably said in his head, you know, the way that the roster set up, we got to bring some talent in a little, the money a little bit tight out there in Dallas. He, he took, he took, he's taking the tank route, man. He's, he's taking the tank route. He's no longer expert. He's ex-tank. Ex, the, the spurt tank. The spurt tank. He's an expert right now at tanking. Because I'm telling y'all, I, I, it, it, it's too obvious, man. Now, I don't know what expert excuse is going to be for this. I don't know if, you know, it, 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 he's, elim- he's eliminating plays or if he's... I don't know what it is, man. All I'm saying to you is this right here. You are an expert at tanking right now because you lost to Marizzi. That's what put the that's what put the nail in the coffin right there. Because let's go back to the chat. When you said out your mouth, this is exact words. Marizzi, you will never beat me. In a game of man, as long as I play, as long as I'm playing it, and you took the L to Marizzi today? Oh no, 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 no! Ex, ex, I'm telling you, expert, ex, 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 expert tank, ex tank. He, he's doing it. He's doing it. And I don't think Mr. Jerry Jones gonna, gonna be too gonna be smiling at this one. But let's move on to KP and those Chiefs. You bring in one of the most talented defensive lines in the DML. In the DML, and you sitting at three and five. KP, come on, man. Come on, man. Like, 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 I ain't trying to hear that like, you going, because watch, he going to wind up finishing. Hands down. He going to wind up finishing a little bit better than we said that now. But it ain't going to be one of those good records that we done seen KP produce in the past. So, KP, man, stop making it obvious, obvious, man. Because you just went from being, what, a game or two from the Super Bowl. Now you seen that three and five, and you added, added in Aaron Donald. Come on, man. Get it together, man. Yeah, but give him the button, man. What the all right, man. So let's move on to the last what the fuck topic. All right, man. Listen here. This is for everybody that that's 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 slinging that rock. The INT Kings, man. Darkness, 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 darkness. You sitting with twenty eight interceptions right now, baby. You got to run the rock, bro. You got to run the rock. You throwing the ball. You're throwing 28 interceptions. 28 interceptions, right? But this check is out. You threw a total of seven passing touchdowns, bro. That means right now you're averaging being week nine. Week nine. That means you're averaging right now. Eliminating the Bobby up to this point, you average probably 0.75 touchdowns. Well, we're going to say one touchdown a game. You see what I'm saying? It's, that, it's not working. Run the rock. JB, bro, 28 INTs. You have one of the best running backs in the game. You have DK Metcalf. You have another speedy big wide receiver over there also. If you can't pass the ball, baby, it's either something you're reading wrong. I don't know if it's, it's the it's, it's, it's the it's, it's the cold in your eyes. I don't know if you need some eye drops. I don't know if you need some glasses. But it's not working. It's not working. And my co-host, Mr. Nasty. <laughs> Bring in Jimmy G. All right, you got the X Factor wide receiver. You got the solid running backs. I, 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 I'm, I'm, it's it's mind boggling to see why Jimmy G right now is throwing 28 interceptions. Stick to what you know. Round and pound that rock. 
Make, make your selections, because right now, I believe, what, Jimmy G averaging, what, six INTs a game? Yeah, somewhere up in there, man. Somewhere up in there. I'm about to, I'm about to, I'm about to have to put the dynasty on pause, man. I'm coming out there in Atlanta, and I'm trying not to be the quarterback. Because this guy averaging six INTs a game. I know I can manage the game a little bit better than that, man. But get them guys a button, man. The INT Kings, man. What the fuck? All right, man. So that was another segment of what the fuck. I know the, I know the dynasty is always looking forward to that segment, man. But what we're going to do now, man, we're going to move on to the midseason MVP. And before we bring that up on the screen, man, I, I, want, I, want, I want you to, to, to tell us who were the two finalists. Uh, to make your MVP for the midseason so far, my my two finalists will have to be uh, Austin Eckler. It have been Austin Eckler, you know, the running back right now of the Chargers. Uh, KP, I mean, uh, my fault. I am sitting at seven. I'm eight and one, and this dude right now rushed over, you know, for week nine rushed over a thousand rushing yards, and he has, I believe, a total of eleven rushing touchdowns. You know, and he's ahead of. Uh, what's his name? Tony Pollard, who's has, who's been running the lead since he got in Green Bay. So just to see that level of production out of him, man, and to see where he, how he's elevating his team to potentially make a deep playoff run, I had to give it to him. And also, uh, Christian Wilkins, man, the right end of the uh, Miami Dolphins. You know, this dude, like, uh, was a beast. It was a beast. It's a beast, man. So who are you two? Oh, uh, man, I, I, I looked at it, man, and... and... For me, I'm a defensive guy, so there was only one person on my list, man. I was going with Christian Wilkinson because anytime that you can see a defensive, uh, uh, a defensive guy do disrupt offenses the way that he is, I've watched a couple of their games, and this this guy lives in the backfield, man. I I I decided on on him just because I know this version of Madden, the, the run is OP, so it was kind of hard for me to go with a running back knowing that, so I went with a defensive guy. So. Without further ado, man, let's go ahead and, and, and let everybody know who who uh, won the Miss MVP award, man. So it was Christian Wilkins, the writer of the Miami Dolphins, who locked in the midseason MVP. Right now, this dude has a total of 28 and a half sacks. And like Luke said, man, just watching a couple tight work games, you know, this dude makes everything on that defense a whole lot more easy. When a quarterback snaps the ball and drops back and literally have a half of a second to make a read and this dude is shedding off of blocks is ridiculous and you do have a consistent pass rush on every single play because it looks like this guy never takes a break off to be honest you know when you have a consistent pass rush on every single down on the defense side of the ball and you got guys out there rushing their reads it makes life a whole lot more easier when you got superstar uh cornerbacks you got those superstar x-factor linebackers and you got potential other Guys that you're trying to build up on the defensive side of the ball also that you put on your D-line. When you know a guy like Christian Wilkins is getting double teamed every single play, every single down, it allows those guys to get off. You know, so this dude, man, has elevated, you know, this Miami Dolphins defense through the roof. And the reason the reason why they're sitting at 8-0, and you know, this dude is balling right now, man. He's balling. No doubt, man. Being able to have that power move, man, at 93, so he's just pushing – He's just pushing those offensive linemen back, and he's getting he's getting to the quarterback uh, without fail. Plus, also, man, he's helping out in the uh, in the run game as well, man, because uh, he, he's up there in uh, you know tackles as well within the league. So for for a defensive lineman, he's leading. He's leading with 37 tackles. So um, there's nobody close, man. He's up. He's uh, like four tackles ahead of the next offensive lineman, man. And uh, I, I see your boy Khalil Mack is pulling up third on that list, man. So, you know. Yeah, listen, I'm telling you, man, having, like, I, 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 I sat down with my coaching staff, man, you know, and just was just thinking, like, you know, let's see if we can get a consistent pass rush in. Like, this dude, Khalil Mack is balling with 23. This dude is, is at 28 and a half, man. And it's only week nine. It's like, jeez, that's, that's, that's scary. That's scary right there, man. Yeah, man. Having having a pass rush in this game, man, is a game changer, man. Like I have X Factor on my defensive line, but for some reason it just seems he's not getting off the ball, he's not getting off blocks. So, you know, hopefully uh we can make some changes, maybe move him around a little bit so that he can uh hopefully win win this midseason award maybe next next time we do the show. But we'll see. 
But uh, let's go ahead and move on, man, to the, to the final segment of Move the Sticks. And like and like always, man, we always got to do our Super Bowl predictions with the 2023 Super Bowl coming up at the end of this month. Uh, so let, let's break it down, man. Let's go over who, who you think is going to make it to the big game, man. All right, man. Uh, you know, I, you know um, th- this is the thing right here. Everybody said, you know, right now, Embrew, the Packers is the team to beat, flat out. They're the team to beat, you know, um, not taking nothing away from the dude, man. He just, he doesn't like anything as far as the talent on both sides of the ball, defensively and offensively. He has a run game, uh, has a pass game. You know, get he's getting constant pressure on the defense side of the ball. He has the players to stop the run, has a secondary, you know. So, right now, the Packers are the team to beat. But this is the thing right here, and I'm, I'm putting it out there right now. If... The right sweets, you know, I'm putting the pressure on him, man. I'm putting the I'm putting the pressure on him. If the right sweets decides to show up, okay, because for some reason, when the playoffs come, when the, when the playoffs come around, you know, we don't get the same sweets, man. We don't get the same sweets. If the right sweet shows up in the NFC round of the playoffs, he can dethrone the Packers and make a Super Bowl run. Because the the way that wide receiver core is set up and the way he's implicating the run game in there now, it's making that offense very dangerous. And he has a guy, P. Manning, who is wreaking havoc in the DML also right now, who's sitting with 28 and a half sets. So if the Cardinals can show up, how they be showing up in a regular season, I can see them dethroning the Packers. Now on the AFC side, uh, I, I believe the AFC is wide open. I'm going to be honest. And I'm not just saying that because I'm in the AFC. I just think it's wide open because the, the Chargers are balling out. The Dolphins is balling out. You, you never can take tight work out because the way that tight work, the type of style that tight work plays, that's playoff style football with that grounded pound and leaning on your defense to cause turnovers. Uh, but I believe the AFC is wide open. However, outside of my Pittsburgh Steelers, um, I think that Vitamin is balling on that level that we seen him ball out on that very first season of this cycle. You know, I, I he got his run game clicking, his defense is uh, playing. You know, now I don't know if it's because of the type of scheduling that he has, not taking no way, nothing away from him, but I think that the Chargers right now are playing at at high level football. If they could continue to keep that hitting into the playoffs, they'd be very, very dangerous. So with the AFC, I'm going to have to go with the Chargers representing the AFC. Now I got the Chargers and the Cardinals. I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to take Sweets, man. I'm putting the pressure on Sweets, getting his first banner in the DMO. Now, like I said, the Packers are the team to beat. I'm putting the, I'm putting the pressure on him, man. I think Sweets, Sweets can get it done this season, man. Man, for me, I'm going to start off in the NFC, man. And uh, I'm not going to waste too much time in the NFC because I believe everybody in the NFC, to be honest with you, is playing for second place at this point. I don't believe anyone would be able to, to dethrone the Green Bay Packers this season or next season. At some point, I figure, man, those big contracts in the offensive line is going to start to wither because they're kind of up there in age. Uh, then somebody might be able to, at that at that point, you know, be able to, you know, dethrone him. But at this point, I have him winning the NFC, going back to the Super Bowl again this year, raising uh, what probably will make, what, his third banner in a row? Mm-hmm. So, no, no, it'll be up his third banner in a row, three-peat. Yeah, so uh, that'll be very interesting. So, but let's go ahead and move over to the AFC, man. And I'm not going to be biased, like you said earlier, just because I'm in the NFC. But I, I think, man, anybody in the AFC is pretty much playing for second place at this point. You're just playing to get to the Super Bowl and lose to the Packers. That's just pretty much it. And, and for me, I'm thinking that this is the year that, you know, the Miami Dolphins, uh, I, I think things are just clicking for him, man. That defense is clicking. His, his run game is, is is clicking. You know, tight work is, is methodical in the way that he plays, man. Like, he, he runs that ball pretty good, and then he's able to, you know, make those short passes. To, to, to set, you know to keep the, the ball moving up and down the field uh, so I, I kind of think that he, he will be the one that faces off in the Packers and he will be the one that uh, leads the Super Bowl uh, disappointed and and we have to watch Embro 
raise another banner which helps me out because it's just copy and paste at that point and i just have to change the year and it saves me a whole lot of time so good luck in bro <laughs> y'all hear that man y'all hear that we, we all we all all 31 users play for second place y'all better man the, the, it's a bounty out man it's a bounty out on that boy head you we gotta dethrone his ass man yeah i remember i remember people saying that too who was the guy that was here a while ago uh uh hot tub hot tub i remember we had a big bounty out for hot tub too that never worked out for us <laughs> <laughs> so y'all bad d throw them man come on y'all get it together man it starts with the nfc first sweets let's go man yeah good Surprise luck healthy good luck sweets not this week but uh good luck <laughs> good luck man good luck in the playoffs but uh that that this that about wraps up another episode of move the sticks man uh once again man Ah, uh, uh, we're, cu- we're getting ready to close out another season, the 2023 season. Uh, I, I want to send a big shout out, man, to uh, my guys in the background that are starting the process of getting ready for high stakes and getting ready for the team draft. It's always a process. It's always a grind uh, because we always want to keep uh, pushing the envelope, making things look even better than they did before. So we're starting early this year, uh, looking at some new things, man, that I believe that once once everything comes together, it's going to be 10 times better than last year. So I want to thank those guys. Also, I want to put this out there to uh, we're looking for one other person to come on to the team. And if you come on and, and you work with us, that'll cover your 100 points for the cycle. But if you come on, you got to know that it's a grind and we're expecting you to work from from this point all the way up until uh, it's almost time to go live and, and, and host the show. So uh, you have to be able to follow directions. You have to be able to, uh, once we give you and tell you how we want something to look, you have to be able to do it and get it into us so that the guys that work the Photoshop stuff are able to start creating that stuff and getting it saved so that I can start importing it into uh, the broadcast system so that we can get it rolling. Uh, so if you want to be that guy, you want to come on and, and get beat up and get tortured over the next couple months, hit me up. Um, I'll, I'll interview you just to make sure because we had a guy last year, he wanted to come on and pretty much do what the hell he wanted to do and not do what we were asking him to do. So I can't deal with that again this year because we had to pretty much go back and redo a lot of his stuff. So just need somebody to come on and just, you know, fall in line and, and, and make it do what it do. But before we close out, uh, OG, you got anything to say before we close out? Yeah, man, just, let's keep the season. Let's keep the train moving forward, man. Let's keep, it's been a good cycle so far. So let's keep it moving forward. No doubt, man. Also, man, I want to welcome Almond Raw to, to the dynasty. Hope everything works out. I heard some news about you. Hope that it's not true. Uh, like I told you in the DM yesterday, one of my biggest pet peeves is this goddamn QB drop back stuff. Please don't be, don't be, don't be a victim of that. Hold to the integrity of the pocket. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know, I know. Everybody wants to say they saw uh, what's what's the uh, the, uh, the Kansas City Chiefs QB? Uh, Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, he can do it, but everybody in the NFL can't goddamn do that shit. So, not, uh, so. You know. Especially when you're playing the video game, man. We already got it done. Come on. Yeah. It, it, it's, just, it's just, come on, man. Yeah, so. But uh, not to hold everybody up, man. It was another good show. Once again, I'm your host, Nasty Nuke. And like always, I got the OG Chris Murray with me. And we're out. Peace. <laughs>